尊敬的华社、尊敬的华社各社团的代表和外省的同行们，尊敬的各位来宾，下午好。有菲律宾铁商工会所主导的电商研研讨会现在开始，请今天下午的节目主持人 Miss Candy s t a n Thank you, Mr. Wilson Tan, for introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 女士们、先生们，大家下午好。Welcome to this year's webinar brought to us by the Philippine Hardware Foundation, Incorporated, with the topic "E-commerce and digital marketing during the pandemic." Before we proceed further this afternoon, I would like to invite everyone to please rise for the singing of the Philippine national anthem. 全体肃立，走菲律宾国歌。You may now be seated. Please sit down. Today's webinar wouldn't be made possible without Philippine Hardware Foundation Incorporated, and this foundation wouldn't also be here today if it weren't for the dedication and determination of our forefathers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us take a look at how we have managed to make it this far with a century-old history through this video. Please look at the big screen. Philippine Hardware Foundation Centennial History. As time goes by, science and technology develop rapidly, and interventions of all kinds are made with each passing day. The life of mankind has also undergone drastic changes. In order to survive and develop, I believe the industrial and commercial sectors should give careful consideration in finding ways to achieve mutual benefit and win-win situation, so that people can live in harmony. Clothing, food, housing, and transportation are all needed by human life. In a civilized and progressive society, housing is closely related to transportation and hardware. Therefore, the hardware manufacturing industry and traders have made indelible contributions to national construction, human daily life, and social prosperity. The Philippine Hardware Foundation, Incorporated, was founded by the forefathers of the hardware industry. In order to avoid the vicious competition of dumping price of goods and seek solutions to common problems, the hardware businessmen invited their colleagues to brainstorm and collaborate with each other, and then established the Little Luzon Overseas Chinese Hardware Merchants Association in 1920. In the 1930s, in order to comply with the regulations of the Overseas Chinese Affairs Commission, the name was changed to Philippine Overseas Chinese Hardware Merchants Association. Due to the localization ruling in the 1950s, the bylaws of our association were amended and replaced the name with Philippine Hardware Merchants Association. Membership has been opened also to all nationality. At that time, the operation of the association was flourishing. During the establishment of the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry Incorporated, the representative of our association, Mr. Yu Ketai, was elected as their first president. He led FFCCCII, the highest business organization in the Philippines, for eight years. In the course of its growth over the past century, the Philippine Hardware Merchants Association has unfortunately suffered two catastrophes. The fruits of the hard work of its forefathers and predecessors have all been wiped out, resulting in heavy losses. First, during the Japanese occupation in the Philippines in 1940s. Its operation was suspended, and its equipment and historical records have all vanished. Second, in 1964, an unprecedented fire broke out in the Chinatown. 
the office leased by our association was also affected and burnt down. After the disaster, directors and members persevered and reorganized so that the operation can continue to recover and to finally overcome the difficulties. With the joint efforts of the succeeding directors and members, each term has made outstanding contributions. In 1982, we built the association building to have our permanent office for our daily operations and to work together with other major associations of the Chinese community to make contributions to social welfare. On the same year, the name of our association was then amended to Philippine Hardware Foundation Incorporated. Over the past 40 years, we have sent many delegations abroad to visit and study the trade and industry of various countries and visited the chambers of commerce of major cities in China, United States, Canada, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Brunei. On the domestic side, we also visited Cebu, Bacolod, Iloilo, Davao, Cagayan, and General Santo City. It has benefited a lot from broadening knowledge, promoting mutual understanding, and strengthening friendship among the hardware traders. Thank you for the video. Despite the immense challenges that our father fathers had faced, they refused to indulge in negativity or pessimism and continued to persevere and strive for the best. And thanks to them, we are here today. And now to start today's program, we are pleased to have Mr. Stephen Wong, President of Philippine Hardware Foundation Incorporated, for the welcome remarks. Our guest speaker, Ms. Janet Cheng Tora. Ms. Ann Kathleen Lim, President of Cebu Hardware Consolidated Inc. Mr. Gilbert Yanko, President of Dabao Hardware Association. Mr. Benjamin Barcelona, President of Bacolod Hardware Merchants Association. Mr. Kane Tan, President of Iloilo City Hardware Traders Association Inc. All distinguished leaders and friends from different associations, our past presidents, directors and members, our industrial partners, friends, ladies, and gentlemen. A happy and pleasant Sunday to all of you and welcome to our webinar entitled E-Commerce and Digital Marketing During Pandemic. We, Philippine Hardware Foundation, are committed to develop ways and means to enhance and improve the lives of our countrymen. As such, this webinar is conducted to disseminate knowledge, know-how in this automated age. This event start off our first in our foundation's centennial years. As we now live in a digital world and for us to adapt with the changing business trend and to penetrate the global market, e-commerce and digital marketing has a great role to play. I will not take too much of your time as we are now excited to listen to our guest speaker who will share her expert views and insights in our topic today. We hope this webinar will bring you new ideas in making business and can help you to survive during this pandemic and beyond. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Stephen Wong. And our deepest thanks to everyone for joining us on a Sunday Family Day. Family Day. Basic e-commerce, dynamic e-commerce, and how to incorporate digital marketing to e-commerce business are some of the points we will be learning today. And so with this, may I invite Vice President Mr. Reynolds C. to introduce our guest speaker for this afternoon. Thank you, Candice. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I have the distinct honor to introduce our speaker today. Ms. Janet Cheng Toral. Ms. Toral has been promoting the growth of e-commerce in the Philippines since 1997, and she's the site owner of DigitalFilipino.com. She's the e-commerce program head and lead trainer for the certified e-commerce specialist, e-commerce entrepreneur, and e-commerce professional program. 
with the John Maxwell team. She, as a, she is an independent executive director, certified coach, speaker, trainer, behavioral analysis consultant, youth facilitator, parenting, and family coach. She is a co-founder of iMetrics Asia Pacific Corporation, makers of the e-commerce intensity index, e-commerce maturity scoreboard, and monitor. She is also a certified executive coach with Marshall Goldsmith Stakeholder Centered Coaching, a certified global leadership coach, as well as a team coach with the Global Coaching Group. She is also a Robbins Madden Madanis trained coach and Book Yourself Solid certified coach. Janet has launched an e-commerce book in the year 2000, Digital Filipino, an e-commerce guide for the e-Filipino. She has also published 14 research reports and promoted CMMI growth in the Philippines. Janet's interest in the software development field made her pursue Scrum Master and Scrum Product Owner certification. She has launched a members-only digital Filipino club and became the first Filipino writer to be published by McGraw Hills Education Asia in the printed edition of the Digital Filipino E-Commerce Workshop ebook. She has also published a Philippine internet documentary and she continuously promotes e-commerce excellence with the Digital Filipino Web Awards. She actively promotes e-learning since 2003. Her 2003 e-commerce online workshop got nominated in various awards and got the runner-up prize in the e-services Philippines Best Education Award of 2004. Janet's, Janet's work in Digital Filipino paved the way for her to speak in local and international events, including but not limited to 6 APEC e-commerce alliance forum in China, e-commerce show Asia in Singapore, global research estate development and agents conference in Malaysia, global leadership in institute in Thailand, APT workshop on principles of cyber legislation for the Pacific region in New Zealand and other events in Korea, Hong Kong, USA, Mexico, Taiwan, Nepal, and exotic Fiji. Last August 2011, Janet went to the U.S. to participate in the three-week International Visitors Leadership Program. Traveling on an individual program, she went to Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania, Alabama, Texas, and Seattle. Her customized program allowed her, allowed her to meet key persons in the Department of Justice, in Congress, Federal Trade Commission and Microsoft, just to name a few. Last September 2011, Janet was also one of the six women innovators showcased in the APEC Women and Economy Summit in San Francisco, USA. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please give a warm welcome to our very talented speaker, Ms. Janet Cheng Toral. Ms. Janet. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction, Sir Reynold, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, Mr. Stephen Wong, Mr. Hubert Suntan, and uh, to Ms. Candice Tan, and to everyone from the various associations uh, affiliated with the Philippine Hardware Foundation. And uh, thank you very much also to um, uh, to the people who brought me here, no? uh, Johan of uh, EnterpNegosio.com and of course, uh, Mr. Reginald no? for, for bringing me here and making me a part of your event. Uh, when I got uh, asked uh, to speak at your event today, uh, the topic that was given to me is all about e-commerce and digital marketing uh, during the pandemic. And uh, I was so excited because uh, it's very rare. Uh, it's a very rare opportunity to get in touch uh, with our roots, no, with the Filipino Chinese community. I remember the last event that we had an e-commerce event, which was more than a decade ago, was with the Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce. So to be able to do, um, I think that was a, a decade or uh, more than a decade ago already, and to be with you today. Um, uh, brings back uh, that feeling of uh, reconnection. And uh, I think uh, like most uh, half Filipinos, half Chinese uh, uh, people in the country, uh, most of us did not get the chance to practice our Chinese that much. No? As, like in my case, I did not have that opportunity. However, uh, I, I'm very glad that uh, through the years, uh, I was able to reconnect uh, with my roots again. 
um, I think starting by uh, being part of the Philippine Dragon Boat uh, Federation through one of the teams called Triton Dragon Boat Racing Team. Uh, I'm so glad also that my son, despite the fact that he was not able to practice uh, uh, study Chinese, uh, he took it on his own when he after college and, uh, and uh, became the guardian of our family tree and uh, really uh, is investigated uh, about our roots. No, He went to the MB Society to learn more about our roots and even went to China, <laughs> uh, uh, went to one of the villages there and discovered our roots and, uh, and visited uh, and, got to found, and got to discover our temple because actually my real surname is uh, C, while the Cheng was an acquired surname when my father uh, became a Filipino citizen. So uh, he's still uh, very much active in the community and uh, I'm very glad that he's now uh, level one. No? Uh, he studied at the Confucius Center and uh, learning a lot also about, about the language. And I think uh, this whole world being online uh, with e-commerce, digital marketing, bringing us closer together through social media has uh, allowed us also uh, to get connected with our relatives, uh, especially in other countries where we lost touch no, or where we lost connection, especially if we're not really uh, connected with our ancestors. And I hope that after the pandemic, we will be able to go there together and uh, meet our ancestors uh, and meet other uh, relatives uh, in the mainland. So when when I got asked to join this event, I asked our, um, our proponents, no, who are you? Where are you from? And I was told that uh, most of you are in the hardware sector. But I believe since this event is open to the public, we are we also have entrepreneurs of various types. And when usually when I conduct sessions like this, one of the questions I ask is, uh, "What worries you at this time? And and what do you like to achieve today?" So may I invite our participants to use the chat box? Uh, may I know what worries you at this time? Uh, for the entrepreneurs that I got the chance to work with, especially those based in Cebu, uh, the, the number one worry right now is the new lockdown uh, measures uh, being implemented. And others are worrying about the holiday season. Others are worried about the employment, while others are worried about their competition. So will, will it be okay for our participants to type some answers in the chat box? Hi, Johan. Hi, Edwin, Clarence. Uh, they are in the room. Thank you very much for your greeting. So, uh, may I ask our participants to perhaps share in the chat box what worries you at this time? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, for me, definitely, it is the lockdown. Of course, there's the Delta variant that is also causing a lot of worry uh, for us. And the others, uh, not closing the business again or not having established their presence online. That's also a common worry that I hear. How about you? Uh, what worries you at this time? So NAPS mentioned the lockdown and continued business. So thank you very much uh, for sharing that. The upcoming ECQ as shared by Honey Reyes. Okay. Uh, Delta, okay. More lockdown and virus keep evolving as shared by Stuart. Thank you very much for sharing that business uncertainty with the pandemic thank you for sharing that um normally when when we talk about e-commerce and digital marketing because even with the lockdown business has to continue one way or another and for those of us who have extended our business online usually our challenges or our problems uh con are are expanding as well no so one of the worries that we often have is a uh, competition because right now with e-commerce we're now competing with products from from the mainland and other locations in the world being sold in local marketplaces there's also distraction like interesting today we are together wa watching this webinar but i won't be surprised if you are also monitoring the olympics because earlier on i was also watching the <laughs> olympics games no and um, monitoring the boxing matches so we're trying to do two to three things at a time. So unlike before, where we can focus more. And there's also commoditization when you have uh, too many choices uh, in the market. And, and the challenge with all of this is sometimes we get carried away. Like for example, with competition, if you see one of your peers doing something, 
because they're doing something you might want to follow it or maybe your competitor is doing something you might want to copy your competitor but the problem in copying what others are doing it does not guarantee that it's it's necessarily working for them no you might what you might see are all attempts but they're not yet necessarily successful but if you're copying and you have limited resources if 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 they are taking a dip and you you might also end up taking a dip but if you don't have any resources left you will stay and you will go down while the others uh, they might improve and 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 they might go up but for the others they won't be able to do so so that is why trying to copy what your competitors are doing are not necessarily suggested because our our situations are different and we might end up being in the same rabbit hole as they are if if things will take a wild turn so the biggest part of our digital transformation is changing the way we think as mentioned by Simeon uh, Preston. Um, when, when we talk about embracing e-commerce, especially for those of us who are, who are not doing it yet and considering in doing it for the first time, there is a part where we will do a lot of digitalizing, which is whatever is in the physical world, we try to convert it to the online world. Like for example, you're selling a hammer but instead of have selling it in your hardware store, you will take a picture of it and then you will post it online, like maybe in a Facebook group or in WeChat or in your uh, favorite groups or channels or even Viber, Viber groups, right? But then after digitalizing, we also have to enter the process of digit, uh, digitalization. Huh? And, in, and in digitalization, we, or digitization, we would like to convert our existing process and make it digital. You know, like, for example, instead of sending invoices in paper form, we will send it electronically. And then we can move towards uh, digitalization where we try to improve our processes uh, through the use of digital. And this is now uh, an important trend. And when asked, uh, how are we affected by the pandemic? I'm sure um, most of you have seen the latest numbers as to how the pandemic and the lockdowns are affecting our business numbers. But even for entrepreneurs, like for example, prior to the pandemic, uh, women entrepreneurs were outselling men's business by 106% in platforms like Lazada. But because of the pandemic, women's businesses dropped by 79%. No, so and so although in reality they are the majority of the entrepreneurs that can be found in a lot of these marketplaces but in the process they are the ones who are suffering the most at this time and they are performing uh, less and not not better in comparison to the men, to the men owned businesses when things were start when things were starting or heating up prior to the pandemic and what makes in, what makes things interesting also at this time is the growth of digital banks. Before, I think most of us would like to go to the bank. I I remember my ama when I used to live with her. Uh, she would go to Metro Bank and China Bank every day in the morning because uh, one of her businesses then was uh, she offers uh, what do you call that? Like you, I think at that time you you. The banks were allowing endorsement of checks. Like for example, let's say I have a check. Uh, let's say I receive a check from Mr. Wilson Tang, but the check won't be due until two weeks. But I need the cash today. So people would go then to my ama when she was still alive, and she will uh, change the check, no, and give them money with a little bit of an interest, and they will issue her checks as well. And and I think there were endorsements of checks happening at that time. But in comparison to how things were done in the 80s, of course, with the rise of the ATMs, uh, we started using ATMs when transacting money. And then with the rise of uh, digital banking, uh, now checks that used to take uh, three days to clear can now clear for a day. And we're now reaching a point also that we now have pure digital banks. If you have uh, Gcash, you can now open uh, a, a a CIMB bank account and get 2.9% uh, interest. You can even invest in bonds no, uh, through the platform and uh, get a reasonable interest as well no, from your money. So things are pretty much changing. And if I'm not mistaken, there are now uh, four 
four accredited uh, digital, four or five accredited digital banks in the country. But uh, despite that, of course, we're facing a lot of challenges as well, as we are also seeing a lot of uh, fraud attempts in this area. And I think I have to mention this because when people talk about e-commerce and digital marketing, sometimes what people are seeing are all roses. Or sometimes what people are seeing are all the fears, all the things, all the things that they need to fear of, no, when it comes to e-commerce. And um, but in reality, a lot of things are happening, a lot of things are progressing, and it's up to us to decide how can we take adva- advantage of uh, these developments. And. To answer the complaints that a lot of people have or are experiencing when it comes to online, the Department of Trade and Industry is now piloting an online dispute resolution system. So that means if you bought something from a vendor, whether they have a website or not, and you have a complaint, uh, the DTI has released an online dispute resolution system already. And I think the courts are now making an effort to make the small claims court uh, the settlement and the, the handling of the cases to be happening online also since they realized that we will not also be going back to the courts uh, uh, at the full at, at full bloom no anytime soon at any time soon so they have to change the process also of how they're going to facilitate all of these uh, complaints and all of these uh, issues that the that various buyers and sellers and consumers are experiencing. Arvin, thank you very much. Uh, Arvin mentioned that my AMAS discount is called rediscounting no? <laughs> for the check. So I'll, that's correct. That's correct. So anyway, let's continue. Now, when we talk about embracing e-commerce and digital marketing, there are a lot of things that we can take, take into account when improving uh, the way we do things online. Of course, when people talk about e-commerce, they think of having a presence on marketplaces. Like I remember in Cebu, one of the entrepreneurs there have uh, an online website uh, where they sell a lot of the equipment being used in construction projects. So you can either create your own marketplace, you can also join existing marketplaces so that you can maximize the best of both worlds. No? You maximize the audience of the existing marketplaces, but at the same time, you need to have your own website so that if you can have better offers or you can have new inventory or exclusive inventory or ex- exclusive products only featured on your website. For a lot of the entrepreneurs, they also start using uh, social media marketplaces, uh, pages, and messaging. Although that is okay and you can be found. However, when people start using platforms like uh, Google to look for potential suppliers, uh, most likely they will not be able to locate you, especially if there are a lot of players. So usually we may, you, we might start using social media to reach out to our target market and marketplaces. But eventually we will need to have our own website and if possible, if, if, there's a, if there's an opportunity for you to be uh, part of mobile applications as well where your products can be found, that will also give you more exposure. And when we talk about digital marketing, usually people look at it from a perspective of doing email marketing or text blast. Or, but now people are also considering search and social media advertising and I will be showing some examples of that later on. But e-commerce and digital marketing alone is not enough. We also have to improve the way we do business in our organization. And that includes the foundation, no? having a customer relationship management system. More often than not, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs who would like to do online marketing, but they're not taking care of their existing database and taking effort to keep in touch with their existing database. If you believe that majority of your business will come from your current customers or from people that you have a lot of relationship with, then customer relationship management is the foundation of all the initiatives that uh, that you can have. Uh, that's that's my suggestion. Before you do all your e-commerce market or e-commerce activities or digital marketing activities, uh, fix your customer database because they're 
they really need to be taken care of and they really need to be nurtured. When when I, I started Digital Filipino back in 1999, so now it's uh, 2021. So my website is more or less uh, 21 years old already uh, this September. And people usually ask me what what helped no for the website to last long and for me to get to still get invited to events like this no despite the fact that there's a lot of uh, competition already and there are a lot of uh, new players in the market and I would say that really uh, having being able to take care of your existing customers fostering a good relationship um, is still the most important investment that any entrepreneur uh, can do. And if you can extend that in the digital space and grow that and grow your network, as we would say, then that will give us the opportunities that we need to grow our business. Uh, to work better, especially now, uh, I think we're now entering a reality that work from home or work from home or distributed work will be the new normal that maybe 60%, 70% of your workforce will be home-based. You will always operate like in a skeletal environment, at least for a year or two. Then we also need to establish process where we can have a better online office. That's why uh, platforms or services like Google, Google Drive, Google Docs, uh, Microsoft 360, among others, are very popular right now because we need to be able to coordinate online through these platforms, having online chat, using Zoom uh, for meetings, no? uh, attend using Zoom for conferences, among others, is now the new normal. Uh, we're not, ex although there is a there is a projection that supposedly by September there will be a return to work. Uh, call uh, for in a lot of countries, but with the Delta variant that is not seen to be happening soon this year, you know, most likely next year, assuming that there won't be another variant coming out after the Delta variant. So all of these are components that are important. Let us not just focus on e-commerce and digital marketing. Remember that we also have to improve our back end so that we can communicate better, we can track our movements better, and take care of our customers better. Because no matter how good we are in selling online and in marketing online, um, and the moment if we will if, if we will not be able to take care of our existing customers, our business will not mature. Uh, because when you are in the maturity stage, even if you're not marketing so much anymore, your business is still running. You still have customers because you have established relationships. And I think for a lot of the members of the hardware, Philippine Hardware Foundation, I think a lot of you are in that situation. But of course, the market is changing. You now have the millennial generation coming in. So we have to grow our database, our existing customers to include them. So while, while not forgetting that, uh, that, that that foundation and grow on top of that foundation that we have built. Okay, so if we are clear so far, is it okay? Can you type one in the chat box if that is clear for you? Okay, if the message is clear, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so when we talk about fr the framework for digitalization, uh, usually people would ask if I will start doing online marketing or start to promote my business online, what should I do first? Um, of course, it depends on the current situation. If your concern right now is, I don't have cash flow, my cash flow is so bad, I want to improve my cash flow right now, then if, if cash flow is very important, then we should go out there, join marketplaces like Lazada, Shopee, or uh, whoever will be willing to accommodate your products and services and help you bring your products online. I think that's the, that's the first thing that we need to do is to go out there, join Facebook Marketplace and post your products on Facebook Marketplace because they have to know that exists. Uh, along the way, we can also improve our business model. We can also improve our supply chain. Some, some people will ask me, should, shouldn't we do the business model first? 
and improve our supply chain. Ideally, that that should be the first. However, if we are in a hurry, I guess it depends. No, if cash flow is your problem right now, then resolve the cash flow problem by going out there and start selling. And then we learn along the way. No, we we learn as we do it, and uh, all or we can do it together. We can we can do it in parallel. And then, of course, as we as we improve our business model, as we as we put our products online, we can also improve how we market online. And and from there, the moment we establish the foundation, then we can go ahead and keep on campaigning. I think what is important is that we will be able to do we will be able to do things consistently because consistency is key. If we will be consistent in what we do consistently review and improve our process we do a weekly improvement we look at our we look at this week oh no sales this week what can we improve why why don't we have sales okay they did this they did that okay what can we improve so okay maybe we 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 do a little bit of a promo we do some packaging and then we, we try this out this week we try that out this week this week, okay, we were able to generate some sales. We were able to generate some increase. Okay, that's good. Maybe we continue doing it and build momentum from there. Um, maybe I can give you a little example for this one, although it's a little bit of a different uh, sector. Like, like one of my clients is actually an optical shop. So they're selling eye frames, eyewear, graded lenses, sunglasses etc etc because of the pandemic a lot of people are not able to go out so it's hard to sell it's hard to get your eyewear upgraded from before i used to go to the eye shop every year just to check my eyeglasses or to check my eye grade i haven't been able to do that uh since the pandemic and uh, so but you cannot also buy eyeglasses online because you don't know what your grade is no so so they were trying to push eyewear, 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 eyewear. But since a lot of people don't know what is their latest grade, they cannot buy eyewear. And they cannot go to the mall to get their eyes checked. So what they end up doing instead now is they offer a home service eye checkup. The optometrist will visit the home so that they can do a home service eye checkup, uh, at least in the, in the province that they are located in. And so far, uh, that is slowly uh, building interest and in the process through, during eye checkup some of the patients would also end up getting an eyewear or upgrade their lens so that is what I mean that you try to improve your business model supply chain as you move along the moment you understand why your market is not buying what prevents them from buying what is their situation uh, of course apart apart from apart from certain situations where people don't have enough money. In the recent report by SWS, they reported that 49% of Filipinos stated that they felt that they are poorer at this time. And only 18% said that they are better at this time in comparison to last year, while some have remained the same. Although 49% might have said they are poorer, but it does not necessarily mean uh, maybe they are broke, but not necessarily poor. No, So it depends also on the mindset, whether people really see themselves as poor or maybe they are just broke at this time because their income is affected. No? So when we, when we think about putting up a presence online, there are many components. Usually you would like to build a website or join marketplaces. You beef up your marketing channels. You improve your storytelling. Why people should buy now? Why people should act now? And and take the necessary action. Why is it a good time to act now rather than wait? As they say, when everyone is fearful, be brave. When everyone is brave, be fearful. No? What is our call to action so that people will take action? What is a secondary call to action to help them? take the necessary action like for example if a person can still not decide to have an eye checkup maybe uh, maybe they can uh, what do you call that maybe can have an online online checkup first no? and of course very important is to have a customer relationship uh, management system so that you can keep in touch with your customer rather than 
I receive an inquiry now and then since you did not buy I forget I forget about you and don't care about you anymore no? so we don't want that so let's let's deep dive further uh, when it comes to e-commerce normally when we want to offer e-commerce or we when we want to dive into e-commerce most of us when we venture into it we start in the retail component so what do i mean by the we start in the retail component we make money by selling products or we make money by selling service but but eventually the moment you are into the space and you really take this space uh, seriously you would usually expand into other business models for example you might want to entertain getting sub resellers of your products and services so meaning instead of you just selling the products maybe you can ask people why don't you build a hardware business today you don't need a physical space just build a hardware business online uh, you you pay me an amount i will give you a copy of my directory if you have an order i will ship it for you or sometimes what is referred to as drop shipping so there are a lot of people right now who have explored getting into business without necessarily investing all the necessary cash to put up a business. They, what they end up becoming is uh, they become a reseller or an affiliate of an existing business. And so the companies are also changing their business model. Like for example, um, I, I like to eat uh, quinoa which is a specific type of grain, which is a rice substitute if you want to stay away from carbohydrates. So the entity where I buy the quinoa from, so I can buy it on retail. Let's say the retail is a, ch a chitpa per kilo. Now, if they said that, okay, if you want to be a reseller, I can give it to you at uh, Lakpa if I, if I want to become a reseller. And then, they said that if I want to become a distributor, I can get it from, I can get one sack, 25 kilos for SIPA. No? So now I'm thinking, okay, uh, I'll, I'll sign up and become a member so I can get the quinoa that I like to eat for SIPA per kilo. No? Where at the same time, share it with friends and hopefully be able to make money also from friends. If I have an order, I don't, I don't have to ship it myself. Uh, like right now, what I also do is I have an organic vegetable buying network because I like to buy organic vegetables. So since I want to get 10% discount, uh, what I do is I talk to my friends, okay, every uh, uh, morning of uh, Thursday, Pisces, uh, we agree that we have to consolidate our order, get 25 kilos so we can get 10% discount from our orders. So we have to aggregate our orders. So I will aggregate orders from 10 people and then I will give it to my supplier and then my supplier gives me the discount and then the supplier delivers to all the customers directly. So in a sense, I'm already a member of, of this entity where I used to buy on retail. Now I became a member and I became a reseller promoting uh, her products no? or their products. So. So when you think about having a revenue model, don't, don't limit yourself. I suggest, I humbly suggest, don't limit yourself from people who just want to buy from you. There are so many, because of the pandemic, there are so many people who want to make money. There are so many people who want to start their own business. So maybe you can help them. Maybe they, they can become a reseller of yours. So that in your case, instead of you going out there selling online, you get Sub resellers, then you get sub resellers, and uh, and and let them sell for you. You sh share them your catalog. You let them promote, and then when they order, they give you the money. They give you the address. You ship the products. So so that can can be an option, and it can also be a lifesaver for the business, especially if you will be able to. Um, especially if you have a lot of inventory. The biggest problem is if you have a lot of inventory. Um, and you need to monetize them, you need to liquidate them, make them cash as fast as possible. So instead of selling it yourself, build a network 
of resellers, distributors who might be interested to start their own business. And a lot of these people who want to start their own business, they're very young. And if they see that, oh, this business is profitable, they might contact you later and say, uh, this is profitable. I want to buy. I want to have stocks with me. Maybe I can buy from you so I can have stocks with me. So that is also a possible uh, option that they can explore. So usually people start as reseller first because they want to play safe. But the moment they realize that the business is really profitable and it has a lot of potential, they will really go out there and place the necessary investment. Uh, like for example, uh, this is a, you know, I like I I like ma give uh, I like having a massage. You know? So this one is a salve uh, massage. It's a uh, it's I don't know what you call the base, but it's really nice. So at first the business owner only gave me a sample. Now I started buying, and now I really like it. I was already asking, can I become a reseller of your product? Uh, and can I have stocks because I really want I really love the product so so retailers people who buy from you if they really like your products they really like your service of give them the opportunity would you like to become a reseller you sell I, I ship um, and then if the business is good they said that okay if you want you can put up your shop I give you stocks no so that that can also be um, another possibility online and can be a helpful mechanism to grow the business. So before we go any further, I was told that I, I have to be very careful when explaining e-commerce because a lot of our participants are not necessarily e-commerce savvy yet. So I hope for those of you who are advanced, I hope it's okay with you. I will slow down a bit because I might be going too fast. You know, I get so excited when I talk about e-commerce. All right, so let me talk about the various examples of e-commerce let me start with b2c or business to consumer so business to consumer is where you create a website and you are a business and then you try to sell to consumers by the way when the philippine hardware foundation announced this webinar the owner of uh, bill d stewart i'm not sure if stewart is here reached out to me and said that he has this uh business no where where they can also help hardware suppliers. So I said, okay, I will just men I will just mention you. So then you just contact Philippine Hardware Foundation on exactly what you do. Uh, but basically, you create a website, and then consumers interested with your products and services uh, can get in touch with you, right? So that's how that's how it uh, works. Now, so you put your products, and consumers can buy from you. Oh, there's Stuart. Hi, Stuart. <laughs> All right. And then uh, the next one is uh, business to business. So for business to business, there is one business selling to another business. So my one of my, uh, I think I can share the URL earlier. The for Regalo Service, uh, their URL is uh, regaloservice.com. If you if you want to check them out, uh, Stuart, maybe you can share the link to your website. Johan, I think Johan, you're here. I introduced you earlier. Maybe you can also share uh, the link to your website. Now, for business to business, like in the case of uh, Ayo, uh, that Asia. By the way, I'm not necessarily endorsing them, but I'm just giving you uh, some examples of websites. Let's say I have my own business and I want to sell my products everywhere in the Philippines, and I want to accept cash on delivery. However, uh, I don't know which cash on delivery entity should I talk to. So what Payo that Asia does is uh, they they will talk to all the cash on delivery service providers. They will manage it for you. So you just talk to them and maybe you are working with 10 cash on delivery uh, service providers and they will be the one to collect from them. So so that is their business model which is uh, B2B or business to business. No? Um, thank you very much. Hi, Richard. I'll check out your website also later. So this is another example, which is uh, B B2G, Business to Government. Actually, when you think about this, this is G2B. However, uh, this is a government website, but the way they work is that 
you as a business, you go online and offer your services to the government. No? So this is the Phil Jeps. I think the URL of this one is uh, philjeps.gov.ph. If you go there, you will receive notices of all existing uh, government projects and there are also hardware related there. And you can search and then if you are interested, you just, you, if you, you, you need to register as a PhilJeps member and then you'll be able to submit a quotation for some of the government projects and requirements online. Um, for, for the projects that are really big, I think they require you to be a, a specific, a special, a premium member. I, I just forgot the term that they are using you know, for some of their, um, for some of the high-end uh, projects. But normally, all of the projects that are posted here, of course, they have budget allotments already. So if you are interested in participating in government projects, uh, or government procurement, this is the platform to visit. You just go there, you just click on notices, and then you can do search. Click on search, and then you can type hardware or what, whatever products you are selling, and you will even training services. Even individuals can also register and check the services that are being offered through the platform. Uh, for consumer to business, where individuals can offer their service to business, I think the uh, a popular site for that are the job sites like uh, Job Street. If you're looking for a job, you can look at businesses that have job openings and then apply for work. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the current situation, there are a lot of online work uh, available there or work from home uh, type of arrangements. No? So you can check out uh, jobstreet.com.ph. Uh, and other websites uh, like Consumer to Government, uh, in this example, I'm also using the Phil Jobnet, which is a platform where you can offer your services, where you can apply for online jobs and physical jobs or face-to-face -face jobs in various government uh, agencies. And other e-commerce activities, we have C2C, G2C, G2G, G2B, and G2P. So let me show some um, examples here. Also, for C2C, I think an interesting example here will be the likes of Airbnb. Actually, when you think about Airbnb, when they first started, um, if you have a property, you have a room in your property, or you have a house where no one is living right now, you just go to Airbnb and say, hey, I have a house. Anyone interested in renting can rent my house whether it's a short-term stay or a long-term stay. No? And the same also applies for condominiums. However, because of the pandemic situation, some of the condominiums are not allowing short-term stay anymore. Meaning if you have a property and you want to rent it to others, it must be for a period of maybe at least a month or some would require at least six months. No? But uh, of course, if you own your property, then you can be uh, more flexible. And that is where consumers can deal with one another trying to rent properties, no? especially for travelers. And one of the things that you will notice here, um, especially for especially if you know people that are into the travel and tourism sector uh, is the online experiences so airbnb so if you can provide an online experience you can actually register in airbnb and provide an online experience like for example teaching people how to speak hokkien no you can offer that as an online experience on airbnb or you want to demonstrate how something is uh, how something is done or maybe uh, how to join a, a band. I remember one of the reasons why I go to Binondo at that time was I was part of a of a of a marching band, no? uh, Marjoret, <laughs> Majoret, ba yung Marjoret, something like that. No, so you you can you can use it for um, you can demonstrate for online experiences. No, um, and then another example here, like in this case, like if like this person that I mentioned to you earlier, she already created her own website but it's still owned by her as a consumer trying to offer her products to other consumers who may be interested in buying them no? so that is what refine uh, is also doing all right 
And an example of uh, government to consumer websites, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of the PSA uh, Servilis website. And this is where you can order birth certificate, uh, death certificate, certificate of no marriage online. So for example, if you have a family member and uh, they're, they are having an interesting relationship with someone and you don't know that person very well, and you want to verify first if uh, that person is good. You want to check if this person is not yet married. So you can get a Senomar or a certificate of no marriage. So normally that is now a requirement no, by some of the couples before they get married. Uh, especially if, the, if, they're, if they're really not known to one another but having a good relationship and considering marriage. And then an example for government to business uh, would be the website like Social Security System. So for Social Security System, so they have this uh, SSS for all of us employ for the employers. You are required to have to uh, to provide SSS to your employees. So instead of doing the reporting um, manually, you can now do it online. No? For mem and for members, they can also avail of services online via the SSS uh, website. Uh, for professionals, uh, G2P, Government to Professionals, PRC, uh, the Professional Regulations uh, Commission website allows PRC ID card renewal. I think um, al and al uh, services delivery is also now done uh, online. Unlike before where you have to go there twice, no? you have to apply, renew, and then you have to come back to get your ID. But now they are delivering it already. So even the application for the licensure exams happening online. So we won't be surprised if uh, things will also evolve with the examinations in the future and the, the credits that we need to earn. Government to government, uh, you have the GSIS where government agencies can transact with the GSIS to provide benefits for government employees. And you also have websites like data.gov.ph where government can exchange uh, data with each other. Actually, if you're looking for data, data.gov.ph is an interesting website because there are a lot of uh, data sets there that can be helpful uh, for your business. Um, other e-commerce activities uh, includes a professional to business. Like there are websites like uh, onlinejobs.ph where professionals can offer their services to businesses, especially for virtual workers who would like to work online. But if you think uh, online jobs, PH is not the one for you, you can also check out 199jobs.com where, where you can hire people to do cer certain work for you for 199 pesos. And there are also websites that offers uh, professional to consumers like uh, Gawin, where you can hire service providers for your everyday needs like plumbing, um, carpentry, among others. So there's a there's the Gawin website, a uh, focus site, which is actually an, an online uh, eyewear shop. You can, as if you notice here, you can, if you are based in Cebu, uh, you can you can visit their website and click on home service to book a home service where an optometrist will go to your house and get your eyes checked. You know? uh, so you can you can already uh, book that online so this is an example of professionals uh, to consumers professionals offering their services to consumers and of course there are also platforms for professionals p2p professionals to professionals uh, platforms like uh, linkedin.com and they have a lot of advanced tools so like in my case since i am into research i use the linkedin sales navigator to look for people online and to contact them and build relationships with them and uh, and carry out the necessary research no? um, and using the platform uh, for that to work. And you also have uh, professionals to government. Although in this case, uh, Taksumo is not a government agency, but, uh, but with websites like Taksumo, so let's say you are a freelancer or you are a professional and you need help in paying your taxes, you can go to websites like uh, taksumo.com, create an account, sign up for a service, upload your documents, and they'll be the ones to pay for your taxes and take the take care of the necessary paperwork for processing your taxes. No? So Taksumo offers that not only for 
for freelancers but also for self-employed professionals and business owners to file and pay for their taxes. So instead of having an accountant or a bookkeeper do it for you, you subscribe to an online service where uh, people where the the manpower the manpower of the platform will be the one to carry it out for you. Uh, I think the recent developments, like in the case of the Bureau of Internal Revenue, they recently released a series of uh, APIs or application programming interfaces that allows uh, third-party websites to create services that will connect to the BIR no? so, and and use their forms among others. So that is why Taksumo was able to do that. All right. So, was that introduction helpful? Um, do any of them uh, any, are are any of them interesting for you? So, are we good so far? If we are good, can we type two in the chat box so we can proceed with our next topic? So, I hope that gives you a, a basic introduction as to the different types of uh, e-commerce. No? So there are many ways that you can do e-commerce, not just put up a website and sell products. So there are a lot of things how e-commerce can uh, take place. No? So right now, let's talk about have doing digital marketing. Now, when you do digital marketing, some people, when they talk about digital marketing, the way they understood it is that you just create Facebook. You create a Facebook page and then you start posting on your Facebook page. Uh, but in reality, what really works is that for you to carry out digital marketing, you have to look at it from a campaign perspective. Uh, and as like in running, life is a series of sprints. No? So you learn and improve from each iteration. So every campaign should, will typically last for one month, uh, 21 days to 30 days. Uh, if you are advanced already with your digital marketing efforts, a digital marketing campaign can last for 66 days. So usually, uh, you, ra you create campaigns one after the other. And the design is that each one will build momentum to the next. So for example, if in your buyer cycle, uh, in the hardware industry, I'm curious, which what month is the most is the best month for you where the most sales are happening uh, what what month is that is it also november december january what month is uh is there is there is there something like that where okay first quarter of next year okay march to april summertime so different answer so you can say first half of the year no first half of the year so what will happen if i know that most of my sales will happen first half of 2022 then i will carry out a series of campaigns starting now august september october november december all the way all the way to next year but the design there is i should be able to build momentum so um can i assume that some of you have bought products on lazada have you bought products on Lazada or Shopee? Can you type yes if you have bought products on Lazada and Shopee? Okay, if you notice, right, Lazada has uh, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, right? So when you look at platforms like Lazada and Shopee, their most important month is November, December. 11, 11, and 12, 12 is the most important campaign, no? So what happens from 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10. They are campaigning. They're building familiarity so that by the time where 11, 11 and 12, 12 is happening, that is the peak. So on 11, 11 and 12, 12, you have millions of people ordering in one day. In one day, you can receive a million orders or two million orders in one day. But those millions of orders happening in one day will not just happen magically. You have to build momentum. You, you keep on building your customer base. Every month, you keep on building customer base. Okay, this month, we only get X much buyers. Maybe, let's say, oh, this month, we got 100,000 orders. Next month, okay, we got new buyers, a new set of buyers. Maybe we got another 50,000 new buyers. Next month, we got another 20,000 new buyers. So they keep accumulating new buyers, new buyers, new buyers, new buyers. While well, old buyers still buy. Some of them don't buy frequently, but some of them might still buy. At the end of the day, you want them all to buy on 11-11. 
and 12-12. So, so when we think about running a digital marketing campaign, you are doing your campaigns because you are preparing for first quarter and second quarter of next year. You might not get the numbers that you want right now, but you are campaigning because you want that, by the, that when that time comes, you will be the preferred provider because they already have uh, established relationships with you. Um, if you have not, because at the end of the day, uh, people will do business with people they like. Like maybe I'm not the best in, in this field, but because you like me more, you will do business with me. No? So that's how it works. So you, you might not be the cheapest, but because I like you, because you answer fast, no? you can deliver today or you can deliver tomorrow. Um, you offer, you offer uh, good warranty. Then with, with that offering, then it, you, you are still the better uh, service provider. So what you're doing in the process of building momentum is you want people to like you. You want, you want them to prefer you. You want to be able to build trust. So that when the time comes when they have to make important purchases where it can mean a lot of money, they would rather do business with you. All right? So a 21-day marketing campaign can happen every day. So... Although in this case, I only showed Monday to Friday. But in my case, it can be Monday to Sunday. But it does not mean that you have to post online every day. So how will that look like? Maybe Monday, um, I'll be posting. Like maybe on a Monday, I will tell people on Facebook, Hey, um, um, I have this product. Check it out. No? But, but at the same time, I might be sending private messages to friends. Oh, I already have a stock of this one. Oh, to my resellers, we have stock of, stocks of this. This uh, this product is arriving next week. So, I might be uh, building uh, relationships and letting them know of what is about to come, giving information about it. And maybe on other channels, I might be doing awareness, uh, educating them on uh, what they need to know. Some, maybe something that they don't know yet. Maybe a new option that they have not uh, considered yet. No? So, so when we talk about awareness, consideration, um, decision, uh, it's not about uh, posting it online. No? Uh, a lot of them can, be, uh, can take place through uh, private messages. Some of them can, can take place through email among others no? so okay your question the website is uh, taksumo taksumo.com yeah. all right so let's continue so whenever we do online marketing uh, there are many things that we have to prepare for like for example identifying your target buyer and we cannot target any buyer or everyone we want to be able to target buyers who are ready to buy. Because if you just target everyone, you'll end up talking to people who are not ready to buy. And we don't want to waste time with people who are not ready to buy. We only have, limit, we have limited resources. So we want to be able to find people who are ready to buy now. And then what product or service would they need? And then how can I educate them? How can I build credibility with them? What kind of an offer that will interest them, that will make them want to buy now? What kind of content I should create that will encourage them, um, uh, what, that, uh, that will attract their attention and be able to create uh, interest? Uh, earlier on, I talked about the problem with distraction. Remember, I talked about distraction earlier. Like, for example, if I am teaching right now and you got distracted and you did something else and then you come back to the session, uh, but because I am advanced already, maybe you don't understand me anymore. So whose fault is that the moment you get distracted? Um, actually, you can say that the moment the customer is distracted, as far as the customer is concerned, you are the one who's not doing a good job because you allow them to get distracted. <laughs> 
And when they get distracted, they might even think that uh, your offer is not good. No? Or you're not really a good service provider. They might already cast a certain assumption about you. So that is why we cannot just go out there and start posting a lot of stuff, like spamming them. Because uh, if it's not going to add value, it's going to take up space and your customer will be distracted and they will not, you will not be able to leave a good uh, impression with them. No? So we want to avoid uh, such a situation whenever we do online campaigns. So we want to be able to come up with a content plan. So in this case, uh, since we are not in the travel sector, this uh, example may not necessarily uh, apply to you. Maybe I could change or tweak this a little uh, to make it uh, suitable for our situation. So for example, if you're doing a marketing campaign, uh, let's say I will have um, like like I can, I might be promoting a certain package, and then maybe I can have an appeal for reseller, or maybe I can have uh, a call for for a distributor. Uh, this is just an example, and then maybe another package, and then here, maybe I can I can be educating them. So it depends, no? So on what product or service I am offering. So for example, if I am uh, selling uh, lighting, so maybe uh, I want to educate my market uh, what is the proper way to uh, light your property, no? So maybe uh, lighting uh, 101, or maybe I want to talk about your roof, no? So roofing, so maybe I want to talk about uh, what kind of roof uh, should, should suit you. Uh, should suit your property or if you wanna if I want to if you need paint for for improving your firewall then maybe I want to talk about uh, firewall 101 or maybe uh, maybe just talking about paints and then here I can also take take other initiatives like if there are customers who prefer my service I can um, get a testimonial from them or feature them among or get get ourselves featured or if we have an upcoming webinar we can plug that now for decision if you are not into resellers then it can be a different features on product so maybe you have uh, lighting options and then maybe you have roofing options or maybe you can have firewall um, options or maybe you have paint options so so it depends on uh, what you are uh, selling no? although I have to admit that uh, in designing a campaign I don't really want to jump from one topic to the other. Uh, like usually, I would like to focus on on certain products. So if I, if I am implementing this in real life, although this is only for demonstration purposes, that's why we put different topics per day. But if I'm gonna implement this in real life, maybe my one week will be all about lighting, and then my second week will be all about roofing. And then my third week will be all about firewall because like right now it's the rainy season right uh, i'm sure for some of the houses uh, some of them might be experiencing uh, uh what they call it leak inside their homes no so some of them would be panicking and try to repair the situation you know and fixing their roof or maybe uh doing something rush no to fix their firewall so i'm sorry this should be Paint, paint options, not paint options. No. But while some, there, I also saw some still building houses at this time. So, of course, you can also mention cement among others, depending on what you are selling in your in your shop. So, to overcome the challenge in doing digital marketing, it's a combination of different factors. So, there's the website you want to do organic marketing. And you also want to be able to engage uh, your users. So 
we want to be able to use uh, social but for this case since we have limited time i will focus on the beneficial use of uh, social media so we can use social media to be able to generate awareness with what we have to offer and then in the process be able to build relevance and credibility and if if our customers find us to be relevant then normally they would inquire from uh, from what we are offering they know that we are legitimate and not a fly by night uh, seller online and if we are reliable and can deliver based on when they need it then uh, you can also generate uh, a sales conversion among others uh, there's an entrepreneur in cebu um, they are uh, i think dj auto club no they're they're selling a different kind of um hollow blocks which are more longer lasting although a little bit more uh, expensive uh, in comparison to the traditional hollow blocks no so they are so they are marketing themselves uh, differently so i think the more you carry sp special products or specific products where it where it requires where it provides a certain special expertise then the more you have to follow this process of trying to market yourself and of course using social media uh, can help a lot but remember um, our buyers go through the same process no? if they are looking for a potential supplier especially if they don't have a preferred supplier if they have a preferred supplier like Lazada and Shopee, maybe they will just go shopping immediately. That's why if you notice, there's also hardware products on Lazada and Shopee. So if people are very comfortable with that, they might just shop there. But if they're not comfortable buying hardware products from Lazada and Shopee, they will still search around. No, They will, they will check out, they will see the players, they will check who is credible, who can deliver, who is more affordable until they are able to arrive at a certain preference. And that is when they will shop and purchase. So it's the same process for regardless of whatever products are being purchased by our customers. And with social media, um, you can skip a lot of them, no? especially if there's a strong word of mouth uh, marketing happening. However, please note that you cannot improve uh, what you don't measure. That is why I was suggesting earlier that you need to regularly audit. So if you're doing uh, social media marketing or Facebook marketing, uh, normally you would want to measure. Like, like in my case, uh, whenever I teach this uh, or whenever I help as a business owner wanting to improve their social media, we would typically track their performance weekly and then we would agree on what, what is the right campaign to work on and then we will start for low conversion, low amount campaigns, something that where we can convert buyers right away. And then we try to build uh, momentum from there. No? So usually that is uh, measured on a regular basis and then ex and also studied and campaigns are calibrated on a weekly basis because if you just give up too soon then you're you're missing you're missing the opportunity to grow and then another thing uh, when designing social media content please remember always try to be relevant make people stop scrolling so whenever people are on social media they just scroll 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 and uh, if they just keep on scrolling uh, that means the content is not getting their attention so we have to create content that will attract people's attention or otherwise we will lose them you can also think about how can you create original content because if the content that you have is also the content that others have then people you will not be able to catch uh, people's attention so even if it's a hammer you improve the graphics you improve the presentation to be able to catch people's attention uh, there's also facebook groups uh, there are a lot of people trading on Facebook groups, so I suggest maximizing that. If you have sales or special promotion offers, you can also use uh, Facebook events to engage with your audience. All right. And uh, from there, you can plan no, your calendar, as I mentioned earlier. Think about the service, the products, or the special deals that you want to sell. Think about how can you educate also your market so that you will not just appear as a product spammer because that is usually the problem of certain um, 
sectors or certain individuals, all they do is promote. So at the end of the day, they end up turning off people because they are perceived to be not adding value, but just contributing to all the spam that is being found out there. And then uh, keep on building your credibility. So when we talk about awareness, you want to turn strangers into prospects. So you want to be able to attract them and make them your customers. But please remember, marketing is not enough to get clients. We have to really zoom in to the clients that we want to serve, what we refer to as the red velvet rope. Because if you try to attract everyone and make them your customer, you're not targeting, you're targeting no one. So as much as possible, be really focused on the market that you want to serve. And then the moment you've identified that, you try to build credibility with that market segment by publishing content that will help you build that credibility. And hopefully, if you will be able to do that, they will like you. And the moment they like you, they will also want to do business with you. So, so that is why we have to create a trust building uh, sales cycle. Like you come up with free offers, like maybe you can offer free consultation. Oh, you want to build a house? You don't know what cement you should get. You don't know what paint you should get. You don't know what kind of roof you will get. You don't know what... Uh, uh, what else? What kind of uh, wood you will get, no? Then maybe the first entry level will be a consultation session first. And then from there, you can start offering packages. Because normally when people build properties, right? They have, they have specific budget. So let's say, okay, for a two-story house, X, X, X uh, square meters, most likely you will need this much cement. You will need this much uh, wood. Uh, normally you would budget this much and then for this type this is the amount of budget that you must have so you can think of uh you can think of packages uh to help people uh, make the decision right away so the more uh the more you think like your buyer the more you think like your consumer it will be easier uh to engage them and uh build a trust building relationship all right And of course, uh, you will receive a lot of inquiries when you do a lot of your marketing online. And I hope you will not fall into trap where you receive an inquiry, but since the deal did not push through, you forget about them. No? As I said earlier, customer relationship management is the foundation of e-commerce and digital marketing. At least that's where I stand. No? That is the foundation. So when we talk about uh, keeping in touch, um, we need to think about uh, all the things that we can do to build uh, that relationship. So maybe um, we want to be able to capture the leads that we are able to get um, in that process and build our credibility to them, as I mentioned earlier. And if we are able to build the necessary credibility, then we will be able to spark the purchase that we want to get from the customer segment. And uh, keeping in touch with your customers can ca can happen in many ways. There's email marketing. You can also do text blasting. Uh, Globe now has a solution called Amber where you can subscribe for as low as 500 pesos, if I'm not mistaken. That will allow you to send a text blast without looking like a spammer, you know, where there is an unsubscribe option available, uh, where you don't have to be threatened by people like, hey, you are spamming me. You know, you're violating my privacy, so you won't experience getting into that trap. So you can try out uh, Globe Amber if you want to do some uh, proper text blast to your customer segment. If you want to advertise, uh, if you want additional options outside of Facebook, uh, ABS-CBN has a platform called Dash. So if you want your ads to appear on programs like Provinciano, among others, then you can you can try this out. I think they're all, they also have advertising packages for as low as 500 pesos. No? So, so there are many ways now to also reach the segment that you want to work with. So when we, so regardless whether you're doing awareness, consideration, decision, as I mentioned earlier, customer relationship management is key. Whether you're doing marketing, sales, uh, processing the order, or facilitating uh, support to your target customer segments. So usually I would suggest that 
you want to keep in touch with people regularly. So you must have a network of 90 people you want to keep in touch regularly. They can be your clients, your partners, suppliers, mentors. Keep in touch with them regularly. Uh, try to find ways where you can add value so that they can, or one way or another, they might be able to add uh, value to you too. So, um, because at the end of the day, during in pandemic times, people want to do business with people they trust. So you want to keep in touch with them, whether there's pandemic or not, so that when the time comes, uh, people want to do business with with a close, uh, most likely with a close community. You also want to do direct outreach at this time. Uh, these are people that you want to ha- you want to be clients. With. You want to have them as your client. People that you want to have them as your partner. People that you want to have them as your supplier, or people that you want to have them as your mentors and alliances. I think one thing that you can take advantage of during this pandemic is that people have more time now. People are more open to conversations. So I would suggest taking advantage of those opportunity to build a relationship. And uh, you can also look for referrals, people who can refer business to you. Maybe someone from gov- maybe people who can give you a government referral, a partner referral, a peer referral, or even a competitor referral. If they cannot handle the business, instead of just saying, "I don't have stocks," goodbye. They can tell. They can say, "I don't have stocks." Call this one instead, and then you will text them, "Hey, I referred a potential inquiry to you." So, so establish that uh, referral network. In the online world, affiliate marketing is uh, very popular. Uh, you can check them out. At, uh, this is an example. I'm typing it in the chat box. So, so in in the referral world. Okay, I think. Uh, So when doing referrals, uh, you can either refer business to other people or you can also look for other people who can give you business. So these are the kind of people that you want to be able to keep in touch with and continuously grow that network. Um, Grow your existing network of people that you can keep in touch with. Grow your outreach network and grow your referral network. Uh, These are foundational. Yes, you can do digital marketing, you can do website, you can do marketplace, uh, you can speak at webinars like this one, but this is not enough. No, uh, Yes, it can give you opportunities, but normally your foundational networks, are they are still the most, at least in my, in my purview, they are still the most important no? because uh, all of these platforms, all of these things can grow on top of those uh, existing uh, foundations. And then um, from there, uh, as I said earlier, you want to do it consistently. If you will be able to do it consistently, then you can build momentum. Uh, there's, a, there's a thing called the Momentum Theorem by Dave Ramsey. You know? uh, but anyway, when we talk about building momentum, momentum is the leader's best friend. So even if you're not the best, but if you have the momentum, people will be naturally attracted to you. Partners will be attracted to you. When you have momentum, you look better than you do. When you don't have momentum, you are better than what you look. So yeah, yeah, you're good, but if you have momentum, you look better. But if you don't have momentum, even if you're better, you only look good. All right, so that is why we want to build uh momentum usually when people are not able to achieve momentum the primary reason would be lack of focus and more often than not people lack focus for fear or the reason is fear and another reason is greed but if you want to build momentum momentum will be uh focus will be key timing will also be uh important making the right decisions at the right time and of course, your your faith, no, uh, will also help a lot. Um, so, quick tips. Um, I think at this time, I just want to remind you that everything that you've heard, I'm sure a lot of them sounds interesting, and I'm sure you have attended a lot of webinars as well. You have seen a lot of YouTube clips on how to do online marketing. 
um, take ev take everything with a grain of salt. Even what I'm telling you, take it with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, you need to keep on testing. If I like an idea, we need to keep on testing. Uh, that is why if you want to build momentum, we also need what we call mga focus group uh, discussions. No? Not necessarily the expensive focus group discussion because normally you and I are already biased. What we think is good, at, at the end of the day, when it comes to the customer, that is not what they like. So that's why we have to keep on testing. We have a theory, we have to go out there and immediately validate it. That is why audit happens on a weekly basis because every week you're trying to validate a theory. If it works, then it's good, you continue. If it doesn't work, then you uh, kick it out and then try a new theory and keep on testing. And uh, the government, the private sector, usually uh, they have a lot of uh, initiatives for reaching out to people like DTI has mentoring programs. I think JCI also has mentoring programs. PCCI also has mentoring programs. A lot of people out there are offering mentoring programs. I suggest taking advantage of them. Why? Because I think the biggest difference between between the older generation of entrepreneurs and the younger generation of entrepreneurs. The younger generation of entrepreneurs are very open-minded when it comes to coaching and mentoring. That is why there are more younger successful people today because of the trends that are happening online. They're not afraid to get a coach. They're not afraid to get a mentor. They're not afraid to participate in all of these mentoring and coaching. So they're not afraid to learn. Uh, sometimes we don't have, even if we want to, they, we don't have time. We don't make time for it. So I would suggest uh, making time for that. So that for younger people, their logic is that what I can learn in five years or what I can learn in three years, may, I, maybe I can learn it in a year. So, so that's why we want to take advantage of, if, you, if in your community, I'm sure there are a lot of people offering mentoring and coaching. I suggest uh, taking advantage of it, okay? Because they will help a lot so that your journey towards digital marketing will be more efficient, faster, and safer, no? lesser. I mean, if we can do less mistakes, uh, the better because we learn from other people's experiences already. All right, so before I end my talk, um, you can add me on Facebook. So my name on Facebook is uh, Janet Cheng Toral and if you would like to avail of a free 30-minute consultation session for example you have an existing digital marketing initiative or maybe you are currently improving your uh, online presence and would like to get some feedback about it I'll be more than glad to help out just send me a private message and uh, I'll suggest a date and time for a meeting thank you so much uh, Philippine Hardware Foundation for this opportunity Tosha Thank you so much, Mr. L, for that informative presentation. We appreciate having this you know, mysterious area on e-commerce and digital market, marketing clarified. Indeed, we believe that learning never stops and therefore we are ready to adapt to the new normal to pick up new ideas and to understand ways on doing business online. And now that Mr. L has addressed our agendas for this afternoon, I would like to open the floor for the question and answer portion. Now, if anyone has any questions, kindly text your question to cell phone number 0916-299-5760. Let me repeat that, 0916-299-5760. So we also have a lineup of questions sent to us during the presentation. So let me start with the first one from Mr. Sherwin Gong. He asked, returns or wrong orders are a major concern for us. How do we deal with this? Customer made the wrong order, you know, wrong size, or wrong specs they gave, but they are still upset and want a refund or exchange without paying for the cost of logistics. So, Mr. Rao, how do you address this issue? Uh, you're muted, Mr. Rao. Thank you. Yes, because I said the host is not allowing me to unmute myself. So thank you. Um, on that question, um, I think that is the reason why we have to, the way we package our products, uh, what is suggested is the way we package our products. We always have to look at it from the perspective that it might be returned to us, no? Uh, because that is always a possibility. 
Now, one of the ways that we can avoid returns is we want to project ahead what can be the potential problem. Like for example, when selling eyeglasses online, how do you know that when you buy an eyewear, it's gonna fit you? Are you a small frame, medium frame, large frame? So if, if there's no benefit of it, if you don't know that in advance, you won't be able to do so. So ideally, you, wanna, you want to be able to make the sizing very clear uh, uh, so to, to avoid that situation. And then work with four years where there is a provision for returns. No? Um, like, for example, they have a package that if, you, if there will be a return, this, this will be the arrangement. Um, another way of doing it is uh, that's the reason why you also want to have a website because on your website, it can be very clear on your terms and conditions because normally when you have a website, you have to be clear with your shipping policy. You also have to be clear with your return and refund uh, policy and then also with your um, uh, privacy policy. Those are the three to four things that need to be very clear. So if you're clear that if the customer will encounter a problem with the product, it must be returned to you in its original packaging and they must shoulder the shipping cost. You have to uh, communicate that so that it is clear to the buyer. Now, if you want to, if you are new into this environment, then that is where the benefit of joining marketplaces will be. If you join marketplaces like uh, Lazada or Shopee, at least they already have an existing process on how they can handle uh, returns. Um, so there's an established process already, including the pickup of the products if there will be returns. So normally, if you are new, you might want to join that and learn from the experience so that the moment you start selling online, online yourself and handle the orders directly, you will know how to handle it. Uh, that is a big problem, especially when it comes to eyewear, to shoes, uh, to clothes. Uh, that is why for some of the platforms, what they do is they bring two sizes right away so that if possible, they can uh, measure so that if there's a problem, they can return. Or they factor in the pricing that there can be a, a size change. So you already factor that into your pricing when you do your markups. So that you will you will not you know you will not suffer from the headache anymore. No, so if they do not do any returns, if they do not commit any returns or request for any returns, then you can use that amount as a customer incentive. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Jeanette, and I hope that answers Mr. Goss' question. And now we have another one from Mr. Edwin Tan. Are there disadvantages of e-commerce as a business model? Um. Of course, I, I have to be. I have to admit, I'm biased with that. So I would say immediately, uh, there's no disadvantage. Um, I think if you don't do it, you, you can opt not to do it. But of course, your buyers are changing. You have a younger generation who is now buying online. Um, before the pandemic, 50% of uh, Filipino internet users are buying online. But because of the pandemic, almost 70 to 80% of uh, Filipinos are already buying online. So when you are not offering that facility, then that means you are also missing the opportunity of reaching out to a greater market. So if that's a, if that's an opportunity that you don't mind missing, then it's up to you. But if you don't want to miss that opportunity, then then we should uh, we should learn. Okay, thank you so much. And now we have from Mr. Kim Balteng. How can I drive digital traffic to my website immediately? Um, if you want to drive digital traffic to your website immediately, of course, usually the default answer would be to advertise. No? That would be uh, the fastest way. Uh, another way of doing it is uh, to contact all your friends. That's why you want to have, that's why the customer relationship management is very important. Uh, normally, before I would go out online and shout to the world, I will contact my friends first and give a very special offer to my friends. No, uh, Because it's, it's the same, the amount of money that you will be spending for advertising, like for example, some of the social media platforms, if you really want to optimize them, you have to spend like 500 to 1,000 pesos per day advertising if you really want to maximize the exposure. So if you're willing to spend that much, 500 to 1,000, then you might as well budget that for free shipping. 
no? That that is already good for 10 free shipping within Metro Manila or within your city. So you can say that if you order today, uh, you get free shipping and then we ship every Wednesday and Saturday so that you can combine all your orders and you maximize your shipping cost. So, so there are many ways, but if you have a database, I would suggest prioritizing your your database first because they are the ones who have the highest conversion because they know you already for quite some time and they will be the one who can refer customers to you faster than anyone else yes thank you so much and now we have another one from miss liza tan i am a licensed i am a licensed real estate broker i am wondering how it will affect the real estate industry um of course people are still buying properties now um, but uh, I think people are very, but a lot of them are also very cautious. For the real estate brokers that I was able to deal with, um, those who really invested in uh, building their online presence uh, last year, like last year because it was the first year of the pandemic, so it was very difficult for a lot of the real estate players. But for the ones that I got the chance to work with, they were able to get a lot of increase and a lot of them went for tripping. Uh, this year, no, starting the the Christmas season, and um, I think for this year uh, there, there is still a lot of uh, interest. But I think you just need to be flexible because there are a lot of people who would like to sell their property um, before they can buy a new property. So, so I suggest don't limit yourself to project selling. Become a full fledged real estate broker. Help people dispatch their properties. Uh, help people get. If if uh, people will buy properties now because they want to turn it to a business, then maybe uh, get people to rent that property first before you sell it, so that the uh, value will be because it's a property has higher value if someone is renting it rather than selling a property who has no one renting it. So they say that if you are selling a commercial property or house, if you want to make a good pitch offer it for a low rental value have someone rent it and then uh, sell it that will have a higher higher resale value because for the one buying so you can say that you already have a customer someone is already renting it mm -hmm. no uh, so i think you, you you just need to be creative and really talk to people who are able to sell at this time because there there are brokers who are doing well at this time so so i suggest talking to them and find out how they are doing it Okay, so thank you. Um, there are two questions from Mr. Gerald Chan. Um, who can assist businessmen in evaluating their company and setting up an effective digital marketing plan? Also, companies who offer reasonable price service. So this is the first question asked by Mr. Chan. Um, it depends on where you are located. Ideally, uh, you want to be able to get a service provider that is uh, within your location if uh, especially if uh, if you need more hand holding um, however if you are flexible then you can also go for referrals by your friends because there are a lot of service providers online right now and uh, what what can be a cool service provider for me may not be a cool service provider for you so i would suggest uh, get getting a referral uh, someone who understands your business and at the same time can give you the right referral with a player who is also familiar with your business or at least who has the capacity, you know, the knowledge and the capacity to be able to assess uh, businesses of your uh, nature. Because maybe you meet someone whose forte is in the restaurant sector, it, 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 will not be, it will not necessarily mean that he or she will be good in the hardware sector, right? Because they might not, they might not have the necessary versatility uh, to be able to carry that out. So one way of doing it is that you talk to a service. You maybe you talk to five service providers. You listen from their ideas. You ask for quotations. The most serious service providers will give you sample execution. So those who will be able to give you sample execution, at least you know that they are really determined to work with you, rather than uh, people who will not give you uh, sample executions. You know? Thank you so much. And now we have from Mr. Eric Kao. How do you ensure that an online payment screenshot to you is valid or not? Uh, the best way is to immediately validate it to your account. Uh, if you can avoid doing same-day delivery, uh, well, don't do same-day delivery. 
Uh, because some people will pressure you. Oh, I already paid. It's not yet reflected, but I need you to deliver now. So avoid uh, putting yourself in such a situation. So until you are able to confirm payment, don't deliver. So if it's GCash, it really appears in your fund. If you're accepting payment through GrabPay, then the payment really appears in your GrabPay account. If it's through your bank, then it really appears on your uh, on your bank account. Uh, because sometimes people can edit the deposit slips, so 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 try to avoid uh, being put into that situation. Validate first before. Uh, delivery. That's the best way to authenticate whether the receipt presented to you is real or not. And of course, you can always call your bank to confirm. If it's not yet appearing, uh, then if if the payment has not yet appeared, uh, it's best for them to, to call their service provider why their payment has not reflected, rather than you being the one pressured to show why the payment is not appearing on your account. Yes, I think that's a very good advice. Thank you so much. And to follow up Mr. Chan's question again, um, can we use e-commerce or digital marketing for a billboard ads business, pay parking business, and rental property business? Uh, definitely. Um, for billboard business, there's a lot of opportunities there. I think uh, I've, I've seen some people try to promote their billboards, but normally the way billboards are being marketed, you have to rent it for a whole month. So they have to be creative, like how, like now, how ABS-CBN does it. No, before, if you want to advertise on TV networks, you have to budget like millions. No, because a thirty-second ad spot would be hundred thousand already. But of course, there's now digital placements, right? So maybe they can think of, uh, like maybe if your ad will only appear for one day, they can give a good price, or maybe you will only appear for um, several times for five seconds. And you will only buy spots for three days so they need to be creating now with their offers and make it affordable so that uh, people who would like to test first okay can i pay 500 first and uh, or can i pay 1000 first and try it first uh, give them the opportunity to uh, try it try it no and and see if it will work rather than be pressured to pay big money right away because right now a lot of people would like to try it first. If they are willing uh, to give free trial no, as a way, as a sign of goodwill to people so that they can experience how the ads will work, uh, that can also be another option, at least for the legitimate businesses or give them a uh, free, free, free bonus uh, appearances. Okay, thank you. So this is a question coming from Miss Angel. When everything is posted online, it is hard for retailers to earn because people will buy directly from manufacturers. Any tips on how to be able to avoid that kind of competition? Um, the manufacturers, actually, that's a new business model now, no? M M to B and M to C, no? Manufacturers to consumer. Uh, if you can see now, even the big brands, the MFCGs, uh, FMCGs. They now have online presence on Lazada. They're now selling their their diapers directly, their their juices, their their food products directly to the consumer, because uh, they have no choice. Their traditional channels are not available online, or they are too slow in adapting online to the point that it is also affecting their markets. Um, actually, one of my kids used to buy from. China, no. Uh, she used to buy belly piercing and earrings, and I think she's able to buy it for fifty pesos per piece. And then, because they really look nice, uh, when she sells it here, she was selling it for four hundred pesos, no. So th it's a good profit margin, even if you pay for the delivery fee. But later on, um, when especially when the de minimi, there's a customs regulation where the de minimi. From, 10, from 100 pesos was increased to 10,000 pesos. All of a sudden, we received a deluge of a lot of these products. What she used to buy, for, what she the, the pearls that she used to buy for 50 pesos, they're now selling here also for 50 pesos. So the amount that you used to pay when buying them from China is what people can now also pay for. You no, know? they can now also pay for the same amount. So that's the challenge. So I think if you are a retailer. Uh, that is the reason why you have to keep on looking for 
new suppliers, new products. Um, I think that's also the reason why some have invested into white label. You know, like, okay, this is a hammer. I will put my brand name onto it just to make it different rather than having a generic product. Because it's easier, right? Um, so that you, you will be able to make it stand out. And that is now an increasing uh, option for a lot of the businessmen and businesswoman. They're now branding uh, their own products so that even if there are other options in the market, it does not carry your brand. And your brand stands for uh, something. So that is an option that you can also take. Thank you. Now we have a question from Sophia. Um, with regards to website SEO keywording, is it better to focus only on several keywords or more keywords the better? Um, there's a term called the uh, long tail keywords. So for example, if I am like, uh, for those of you who are using Google, mm -hmm. so let's say, um, Normally, when we talk about keywords, you just type one or two search keywords on Google. And then you look for information. But when we talk about uh, several keywords, then it can be a combination of words that people can be looking for. So, for example, if I'm looking for construction supplies, then it can mean maybe... I think I need to demonstrate this in order to make better sense of it. Um, I'll just turn on my browser and then I can come back to it later. But anyway, um, like for example, I had a recent session with the, with, the, with the tourism agency in the Middle East. And they're also asking about uh, keyword optimization and how do I advertise when, I, when, I, when they use keywords. So, so I, I told them that they can use uh, Google as a default. So for example, if I am buying um, cement, uh, where to buy, where to buy cement in Quezon City. So if you notice, while I was typing it, uh, another keyword appeared, where to buy precast concrete. So for me, I'm not looking for precast concrete, but when I was ty typing where to buy cement, immediately precast concrete appears right away. So let's say if I am working on your website, if I, if, if I am teaching someone who's handling your website, I will tell that person, oh, is the business also into precast concrete? So if they are, it seems there are also people looking for precast concrete. Maybe that's something. Uh, that we can look at. So if I will enter where to buy uh, precast concrete, then I will see some options here. And then I can also look for the keywords below. All of a sudden, I will see people are looking for precast fence, uh, precast concrete fence, precast concrete moldings, precast con concrete gutter, precast wall supplier, echo wall price, precast concrete supplier. So, so when when if I will put into context the question that you gave earlier, then I can use several keywords. I can combine all of them in one page, and then I will talk about uh, precast uh, concrete supplies provider, and say that okay, you can you can order precast precast fence, precast concrete, uh, precast moldings, uh, concrete gutter. Uh, Precast wall, uh, I also have an echo wall because I am a precast concrete supplier. <laughs> so it's uh, maximizing all of them. So that's why uh, when doing SEO, actually um, all of the answers can be found on platforms like uh, Google already and including what people are looking for. Uh, the more generic the question is, um, types of cement in the philippines for example so i type types of cement and all of a sudden there's types of cement in the philippines type of cement and their uses type of cement finishes type of cement grade type of cement board cement mix cement in the philippines and their uses cement tile cement used in construction that already gives me an idea as to what people are 
looking for. And then, there's also the questions people ask. What are the five types of cement? How many different types of cement are there? Is, how much is one bag of cement? What type of cement is best? So that already gives me a lot of ideas. So remember earlier, I was talking about awareness, consideration, decision. Decision, cement for sale. That's my messaging for decision, cement for sale. Awareness, what type of cement is best for your property project? So that's my awareness. For consideration, maybe I will say that I will flash all of our badges. We are a licensed cement supplier for the following brands. You know, that's my credibility uh, building. So call to action, buy a cement now or free consultation. Talk to us. What type of cement is good for your house or for your housing project? Talk to us. Let, let me give you proper advice. Yes. So for my whole strategy, I will just get it from Google. I will just analyze all the search results and from there, I will just come up with suggestions. Okay, this is maybe something that we can talk about since I have proof that people are looking for it in the Philippines. No. Okay, thank you helps. so much. Yes, thank you. So because of time constraint, we will have to limit our questions. So last question for today um, from Mr. Eric Tan. In your example, that your supplier will be the one to deliver to all your customers. Is it safe? Will the supplier directly sell to your customers? Ah, okay. That is why if you want to engage in drop shipping, you have to make a commitment not to compete with your resellers. The moment you've decided that you're gonna deal with the resellers, you're gonna open your market for resellers only, then don't compete with your resellers. Now, if it can't be helped that you also have a retail segment, then don't bring down your prices. Or you give them a, a sufficient discount so that even when you lower your price, you can tell them that you can also lower your price because this is our promo for the week so that we can get more orders. Especially if you're trying to, let's say you have a shipment arriving, let's say you have a shipment arriving, 100 sacks of a specific product and you want to dispose of them right away. So you're now trying to get pre-orders, pre-orders for those who will be ordering now and will be depositing the money on or before this period, we're giving you this discount. Then you can talk to all of your resellers to also have the same promotion so that uh, you can raise the funds uh, that you need right away to pay for those pre-orders. Thank you so much, Mr. Rao. And now I would like to wrap up our Q&A portion. Thank you very much for all your concerns. And of course, thank you so much, Mr. Rao, for answering the doubts and the questions of our fellow participants. Now, I would like everyone to please turn on your camera so that we can have a big group photo together. All right, everybody, kindly please turn on your camera and smile towards the camera for a picture taking. All right, I guess we got the photo. Okay, so um, now um, the Philippine Hardware Foundation Incorporated would like to present a plaque of appreciation to Ms. Jeanette Cheng Tarel for enlightening us on her area of expertise and sharing to us her valuable pieces of advice this Sunday afternoon. Ms. Tarel, please accept this with our sincere thanks. Once again, thank you so much for gracing our event today as our guest speaker, Ms. Jeanette Torell. We have learned so much from your presentation. And now, may we invite EVP, Mr. Gerald Chan, for the closing remarks. Hi. Good afternoon to everyone. Before we formally end this webinar, let me thank our esteemed resource speaker, Ms. Jeanette Cheng Torell, for educating us on the different facets of digital marketing benefits on setting up an e-commerce platform and how it can help propel our business. Thank you. We would also like to thank our friends, suppliers, customers, officers and members of Dava Hardware Association, Cebu Hardware Consolidated Incorporated, Bacolod Hardware Merchant Association, Iloilo Hardware Traders Association Incorporated. 
leaders and members of different associations and clubs for attending this webinar. We hope you can put into good use and also share what you have learned today. Special thanks to our MC, PHFI Director Wilson Tan, Moderator Candy Stan, PHFI Director Reginald Yu, and Chinatown TV. To those who are interested to join the PHFI and be a part of the biggest hardware association, please contact Ms. Fei Yang on 0916-299-5760. Email address is sec at philippinehardware.com. Again, thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Gerald Chan. Now, may we invite Mr. Wilson Tan to acknowledge our valuable guests and VIPs once again for joining our webinar this afternoon. Thank you. We also want to thank the first speaker of the main 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 speaker. 飞华商联总会秘书长严长江博士，菲律宾志工党主席总总部姚金姚金正主持，向校友联张连喜主席，飞华工商总会洪丽丽女士，成衣商会名誉理事长蒋小伟女士，新年工会理事长王婉珍女士，电菲菲律宾电视厂商总会名誉理事长 Leonardo Chua。联谊会副理事长蔡明峰先生，东石同乡总会副理事长温义明先生，谢谢你们今天下午的指导，谢谢。非常感谢陈先生。And that officially ends our webinar on e-commerce and digital marketing during the pandemic. Never stop learning and never stop growing because life never stops teaching. Once again, I'm your host, Candice Dan, and on behalf of the Philippine Hardware Foundation Incorporated, we appreciate your afternoon spent with us, and we sincerely thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. 感谢大家的参与和观看。疫情期间，请做好防护。祝各位身体健康，阖家幸福。谢谢大家。Have a wonderful Sunday, everybody.